Behold the world's first disposable car. This is not clickbait. The Cybertruck is literally impossible to repair after even the slightest impact. Our specialized EV collision center services dozens of damaged Tesla vehicles every month, and most of them are repaired without any problems. Model 3 and Y, Model S and X. They can be fixed without much effort, even when severely damaged. Cybertrucks, no. And today, I'm going to show you the engineering reason why Tesla made it this way. Whistlin Diesel crashed his Cybertruck in every possible stress test, and in the end, its tow bar completely detached from the frame. Jerry rig everything went further. He made a scientific experiment with an excavator, applying exactly 10,000 pounds of pressure to the tow bar. This damaged the rear of the vehicle. He demonstrated the repair as something easy, but he didn't say what would happen if the front part was damaged instead of the rear. Spoiler, it would have been total. In real life, you don't need scriptwriters, a film crew, and an excavator to turn your Cybertruck into scrap. All you need to do is to switch forward gear instead of reverse when leaving the garage. The Cybertruck's tow hook sticks out forward. If you hit a concrete garage wall with this hook, it will shift, bend the subframe, and break the side rail. Total loss. Without leaving a garage. At TSK, we specialize in repairing electric vehicles. Our competitive advantage is simple. We already have all the A-grade parts in stock, including the Cybertruck's solid front Gigacast. While other workshops wait months for parts, we are ready to start work without delay. This pickup truck was brought to us for repair. It was used in an advertising startup. It had an LED screen on the roof and drove around Los Angeles. Then it crashed into a pole. The impact crushed the subframe and shifted the front frame rail. Look at the crack and the casting split. To realize the scale of the problem, you need to understand the technology. The Gigapress is a 9,000 ton machine that casts entire frame sections from molten aluminum in minutes. Instead of welding hundreds of parts together, Tesla produces half of the car as a single piece. Faster, cheaper, with fewer joints. That's why Cybertruck weighs less than the BMW iX, despite its size and armored plating. Without exaggeration, it can be called a manufacturing genius. If not one thing, the material Tesla uses. The Cybertruck side rail is made of silumin, an aluminum alloy with a high silicon content and cobalt additives. Silicon makes the material light and great for casting, but it's brittle. It doesn't bend, it crumbles. Steel bends under load. Silumin cracks instantly. We have two wrecked Cybertrucks before our eyes. One, a low impact tore off the subframe. The second, a central impact into a pole. In previous generations of Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, a central impact was not a disaster because of the side rail extenders. These are bolted elements between the subframe and the frame, designed to absorb the energy of the impact. A real-life example. A Model 3 was brought to us after a serious collision. Visually, it was a disaster. The insurance company wanted to write it off. We inspected it and showed that the structural part was not damaged. The side frame rails were intact. Only the extensions and the subframe were damaged. Everything was removable and replaceable. A similar situation occurred with the Model Y. It was also a frontal impact. We were able to repair these vehicles in a few days because we had all the spare parts in our warehouse. We just had to unscrew the extensions and replace longerons, subframe, radiator, fan, wiring, and other plastic parts. No structural elements needed to be replaced. With the Cybertruck, this is impossible. There are no side rail extensions. The entire front structure is one massive casting that extends all the way to the bumper. Even if you slightly damage the tow hook that sticks out of the bumper and attaches to the subframe, the subframe will break off and break the side frame rail. God forbid if you don't have insurance on your car, because you'll have to replace the entire front end of the car. If you are interested in practical information, subscribe to the channel. Your subscription determines how often we will release similar videos. 
It seems we are the only EV channel that doesn't just analyze screenshots from Twitter and Reddit, but actually shares the practical experience. We are ready to repair this Cybertruck. We have the part. But let's look at the process. Replacing the Gigacast means dismantling the electric motor, subframe, entire suspension, heat pump, and everything under the hood, as well as the windshield, dashboard, and high voltage battery, because these are structural parts of the Cybertruck body. And after removing the battery, all that is left is to completely dismantle the interior, seats, trim, etc. This is not a replacement of a part. This is a complete rebuild of the vehicle. Weeks of work, tens of thousands of dollars. Will insurance cover it? Most likely not. Both of these cars will go to an insurance auction. You might say that there are talented people who can fix this without any problems, but welding won't help here. Before welding, you need to pull the metal back into shape. This is where the real problem begins. Silumin is an aluminum alloy with a high silicon content, up to 20%. Silicon makes the material more brittle and completely non-ductile. At the slightest attempt to pull or straighten something, the part will simply start to break off and crumble. When you try to weld and pull the metal back at the same time, something else will be damaged. For comparison, here is the Model Y. The subframe mounts in this car are located deep inside and well protected. In the Cybertruck, the front subframe mounts are located at the very edge, with zero protection. There is no buffer zone, no extenders. The first point of contact is the main structure itself. Big solid cast parts aren't new to the industry. They're safe when used correctly. In a crash, they're designed to break in a controlled way and absorb the hit so the energy doesn't reach the cabin. That's literally their job. The issue isn't the technology itself. Big cast parts have been around for years. What's new is that Tesla took it further than anyone else. They built a full front mega casting with far fewer traditional reinforcements. That's why it looks so unusual compared to older designs. Gigapress is a manufacturing revolution. The number of parts has been reduced from dozens to one. It sped up assembly and lowered production costs. Tesla started the Giga casting trend, but the whole industry is now moving through similar steps. Rear Giga casting is already adopted by Volvo, Polestar, Toyota, BYD. Volkswagen Group joins in 2025. Rear castings are generally safer because rear impacts are less critical. Front Giga casting with additional extensions is used in newer Model S and X and in some Model 3 and Y builds. Cybertruck with a front mega casting with fewer traditional reinforcements. Great for production efficiency, but tougher for repairability. Tesla is introducing technologies faster than the industry can comprehend the consequences. Other manufacturers are focusing on design, displays, lighting, finishes. Tesla is changing the way chassis are manufactured. The Cybertruck has already divided car enthusiasts into two irreconcilable camps based on its appearance alone. However, its filling is even more surprising, not to mention the 48-volt system, steering rack, 46AD battery, and so on. So, think about it this way. You buy a disposable car and crash it. The insurance writes it off, and you just buy another one. If you're insured through Tesla, who actually loses here? Tesla sells more cars, Tesla insurance writes them off, cars go to auction. It seems possible that in this setup, there are only winners. Write in the comments, which topic to cover next? We are ready to show you details that others won't. Thanks for watching. Like and share with your friends so that more people can learn about modern automotive trends. See you in the next video.